Welcome to another Top 10 Auto Show, where every week we look at a different motoring genre and let our esteemed panel of experts choose a Top 10. This week we're going into the more eccentric side of motoring for those who wish to stand out from the crowd, the world of unusual cars. In these days of efficient mass production, it's easy to assume that there's little room in manufacturers' portfolios for individualism, eccentricity and products of the planet loom. But you'd be surprised. Indeed, after the anonymity of the 80s and 90s, it's positively de rigueur to have something a little potty in the range. Unfortunately, the Brits are not well represented here. Reliant have recently stopped producing the gloriously balmy Robin, and suddenly everybody has started to mourn the old tripod. Now it's far too late to save it. There are plenty of good kick cars out there, but we're too snobbish to count them in our top ten, so there'll be no Brits, but a Yank, a bevy of Japanese and an Italian. As ever, the Germans don't want to miss out either, but their balmy motors cheat by being clever too. So, without further ado, bring on number 10. Our number 10 is a 4x4, which is not very odd in itself, but the Daihatsu Terios will fit in your pocket, and that's loony enough to us. A product of the K-Class in Japan, where a car could get tax deductions if it swallowed up very little road space and had a tiny engine. The Terios grew up a little and offered the world a miniature off-roader. Take it seriously as a mud plugger and of course the Terios will disappoint. Let's face it though, who really takes their 4x4s away from the school run? Well, actually... Shut up! You see, in the real world, the Terios makes an awful lot of sense. Nice and narrow for those city streets, economical and with a better than average driving position above the traffic. It isn't really that balmy then, is it? Uh, no. Just a little strange. Number 9 is another evolution of a K-Class motor, the Suzuki Wagon R+. Plus. So what does the plus stand for? Plus paper bag for your head, because you'll surely want to wear one driving this in public. Oh, all right. I don't know. With styling influences from a housebreak, this Wagon R was co-developed with Vauxhall, who call theirs the Agia. The difference? Well, the Vauxhall has different engines and a marginally sillier name. The whole point, of course, is to fit as many people as possible into as little road space. To that end, it's successful. Four six-foot-plus occupants can travel in comfort. Again, though, this is a school-run hero. Plenty of room for the kids and very easy to park. OK, the Wagon R Plus is pretty balmy, but we are looking for something a little more desirable in our lunacy. How about the latest creation by those nutters from across the pond? Number eight is the PT Cruiser from Daimler Chrysler. Take a modern front-wheel drive platform and place a large cabin on top, then throw a design from the 1940s into the mix and you're getting close. Opinion is usually split about the styling, but most tend to like it. After all, there's no losing this car at the supermarket car park. 
The four-cylinder engines don't make this a road burner, but you'd be seriously missing the point if that mattered, for it's still great fun to drive. So what about the performance then? Well, you really would expect this car to have something meaty like a V6 tucked under the bonnet. And unfortunately, I've got to report that what you get is a 2-litre 16 valve. So you can forget any ideas that you've got about pretending that you're in a dragster burning people off at the traffic lights. It's never going to happen. Inside, there are acres of room for five occupants and their luggage, and the atmosphere created is pure fun. So, is it really balmy? Well, not really. It looks very different, and you have to admire the manufacturer for having the guts to make it, but in real terms, this is quite a sensible buy. And number seven is also a sensible buy, the Mercedes A-Class. Whereas their partners stateside were developing retro weirdness, Mercedes decided to go all futuristic. Sure, we've all got used to the one-box looks now, but the A-Class is truly innovative. Underneath the skin is a clever twin floor between which lie all the oily bits. Get hit on the road and nothing enters the occupant's area. There is plenty of space for four inside the cabin as well, thanks in part to its twin floor design. Better still for our particular top ten, the A-Class has earned itself an air of controversy as well. Just as the car was being launched to the world press, some Swedish journalists put an A-Class through their elk test, where you have to swerve suddenly to avoid an elk, which may have wandered into the road. Well, the A-Class rolled over, leading to some last-minute redesign work by the engineers before sales started to the public. I saw an elk once over in Sweden. Really? Yeah, it looked all confused. An A-Class had rolled over in submission and a smart car was crying in the corner. Seriously though, the A-Class is a very good car. The electronic stability control and suspension changes made since the Elk incident have made it virtually impossible to roll one with your brain intact. Shorter than a Ford car and definitely more stylish, it makes for a very sensible buy, which makes it just a little too sensible to be any higher in this top ten. So what about our number six, the Audi A2? It looks unusual, but was designed to do exactly the same as the A-Class. Put yourself in the position of Audi. Mercedes is getting plenty of publicity about the new A-Class. All right, so some of the publicity hasn't been exactly great. Yet in a stroke, Mercedes have created a new niche, a prestige small car. Now Audi wants a piece of that action. Being Audi, you need to have a hat full of innovations and unique styling. The A8 has pioneered a new method of construction in aluminium. So what do you come up with? Well, in pursuit of the aerodynamics Audi are famed for, the styling is different. So for weirdness, it's already one up on the A-Class. The same space frame aluminium technology as the A8 lies under the skin, while the skin itself is also alley. So extra points for eccentricity there. At the moment, there are only 1.4 litre petrol engines available, but the low weight means that the economy should be very competitive. Motoring journalists say it's better to drive than its rival from Stuttgart, as well as having even more room for four adults. Suddenly, it's all starting to sound dangerously sensible, unless you look at the price. 15,000 plus for a small car is quite high. Comparable A-Class Mercedes are not cheap either at around 12,000 pounds. So this is definitely a car for those who cherish the abstract. Of course, Audi will rightly point to the groundbreaking aluminium bodywork, which is not cheap to produce. Then they'll point out that at the end of its life, an aluminium car will be far easier to recycle than a traditional steel vehicle. A car that's good for the environment? Now that really is balmy. Well, we've already had one 4x4 in this top ten. The Terios got in, well, just for being tiny. And number five is here for being completely the opposite. Born in the US military, we present the Hummer.
There can be no denying the lunacy of this thing on British roads. You just cannot merely drive down a single track lane in the countryside without being sure how wide it's going to be, because the Hummer is obscenely wide, long, well, just plain obscene, depending on how you look at it or who you speak to. A huge diesel V8 hauls this monster around. Inside, the passengers are separated by a central tunnel wider than most seats. Luxurious? Well, it isn't that either. The Hummer was designed for the US Army after all. Over in America, this is the chosen ride for many film stars. Here, though, it's pretty pointless. There are not a lot of places you can drive this without sweating about who or what you might hit. Exactly what the Americans planned to do in the European war when their armies backlogged by a narrow road hardly bears thinking about. Weird? Oh yes. Expensive? Oh yes. Worthy of our number five? Yes. Stay tuned and join us in part two in the world of unusualness for our top four unusual cars. Welcome back to the top 10 unusual cars. So far we've had numbers 10 to 5, so what could top our nutty band so far? Number 4 is a car which cleverly hides its weirdness beneath a normal looking exterior, the Toyota Prius. In recent years, car manufacturers have seen rising petrol prices and environmental pressures. The result has been a concerted effort to get more miles from a gallon of fuel. Some have gone for bi-fuel solutions. Volvo were the first in the UK to offer an LPG option to the public, but the Japanese have headed in another direction. They have entered the technically more difficult arena of hybrid cars. The problem with electric cars is that they have a limited range and you have to pair your weight to a minimum. Hybrids use a combination of petrol or diesel and electric power to gain more miles to the gallon of fuel. There are downsides. Electric power needs batteries in some form or another, and they chew up space as well as adding weight. That said, the Prius manages to create room for four. In order to maximise the range, skinny tyres are used. Now these add to the car's range, but they limit the fun for the hooligans amongst you. Yes, if you're looking for fun, then look elsewhere. To be realistic, the Prius buyer is not likely to be a hot hatch fan. Someone environmentally aware, someone wanting to be a little different. For this top ten though, it is not weird enough. After all, we are all about wearing our madness on our sleeves this week. And you'd have to know your cars to acknowledge the nuttiness of the hybrid Toyota. The Japanese are at it again for our number three. We have another hybrid, this time from Honda, the Insight. Where this scores over the Prius in our top ten for lunacy is that it seats only two. There is a large, shallow rear deck behind, below which is some electricery. Otherwise, from the inside at least, it could be any standard Honda. From the outside, though, we get confused signals. From a distance, it looks like a quirky coupe with very skinny wheels. The rears are a little further in than the fronts with a cover over them. All this is for aerodynamic reasons. The Insight is all about gaining the most miles from your gallon, over 83 according to the blurb. So the sporty looks are for show only. Yes, if you're a speed freak, you will not be impressed. Although under acceleration, the electric motor does assist to give a little boost. 
The ride is quite firm, but the cabin is very noisy, and all you'll get for ploughing into corners fast is lots of understeer. Sporting it is not, but it doesn't matter to our band of nutters, for in the search of the top ten unusual cars, the Insight carries its credentials on its sleeve, shouts from the rooftop that the driver is non-conformist. If you actually look at the Prius and Insight for what they really are though, and not in comparison with normal cars, they do their jobs very well indeed. So to our number two. So far our ten just haven't looked nutty enough. Our number two puts that right. Ladies and gentlemen, the MCC Smart. Conceived as the ultimate city car, the Smart was originally to have been born of a partnership between Volkswagen and Swatch, the innovative watchmakers. Mercedes, though, stepped in early on when their rivals walked away and ended up on their own just before the launch when Swatch walked away. The Smart's troubled birth suffered even more after the A-Class had its Elk incident. Mercedes engineers, mindful of a repeat performance, imitated the test. To their horror, the Smart wasn't so clever and rolled onto its side. Several sacrificial heads were seen to roll and a re-engineering job delayed production. But now the Smart only rolls forwards or backwards. This upset the journos who sensed blood after the A-Class fell over and left us with this. A little 600cc engine behind the two passengers drives the rear wheels. Inside, the cabin is strictly for two. And no, our film hasn't been reversed. They only come with steering on the left. Driving one for the first time is like your first time at the ice rink. You feel as though you're skirting the edge of the road because the steering is on the wrong side. It's not really a problem, though, and you certainly don't feel the same lack of balance. The nippy smart is actually quite a lot of fun. We predict that the Smart will become a replacement vehicle of choice for those who drove the Reliant Robin as an anti-fashion statement. It suffers the same ridicule from the misinformed general public based on its looks and gives a nice two-fingered salute to the establishment for the bloody-minded. OK, you lot, while you're all checking your motoring magazines for potential winners, let's look back from ten to two. At 10, the 4x4 that refused to grow up. The Peter Pan of motoring from Daihatsu, the Terrius. At 9, a car which truly is a box on wheels. The Suzuki Wagon R. Number 8 is a delightfully contrived retro number from America, the Chrysler PT Cruiser. 7 is the Mercedes A-Class, earning its place in part due to innovation and part due to unfortunate publicity. Six is Audi's answer to the A-Class. With more time to think about it, they managed to make the A2 comfortably nuttier than its rival. Number five is another American, the physically impressive Hummer. Of little practical use over here, and certainly not for the shine retiring. Number four is an eccentric number from Toyota, cleverly disguised as a boring hatchback, the Prius. At three, we have another Japanese hybrid, which does nothing to hide its place in our top ten, the Honda Insight. Number two is the MCC Smart, a two-seater city car. Rumour has it if you shake a cornflake packet, one will fall out. And so to our number one. To top out here, this car needed to look nutty and have plenty more weirdness to back it up. And it does. The Fiat Multipla. I don't think anyone looking at this car will deny it makes a statement. 
It's surprising how many people say they're repulsed by its looks, yet will spend a lot of time walking round in order to do so. It's just as wacky inside, with a Fisher-Price interior and three abreast front seating. You cannot help but feel a sense of fun in this thing. With room for another three in the back and the boot, it's dangerously practical. It nearly got toppled from our top spot for being sensible, but we walked around it again and changed our minds. You just can't avoid looks and stares as you drive around. Dave wearing a comic relief nose may have had something to do with it, but we suspect it may just have been the car. was a masterstroke by Fiat. In an instant, it made rivals such as the Renault Scenic look incredibly dull, while outstripping them for practicality. Long may this effort towards individual design be rewarded with sales. Join us with the family next week on Top 10 Autos, because we'll be looking at our Top 10 Family Cars.